Calculating the length of a helix is often featured in a number of trades. For example, pipe fitters, sprinkler fitters, boiler makers often need to calculate around curved shapes, as well as when it comes to building a spiral staircase, which should be correctly called a helical staircase. As the coil of a helix can be thought of as the length of handrail that's needed uh, for a spiral staircase. So it's featured in a number of trades. Let's do some math. First one, and I'm gonna have uh, two approaches here, actually three, and going from easiest or simplest to uh, more complex and more involved and more precise is uh, you can just grab a small item such as this and grab a paper tape measure just like this one I got from IKEA and uh, I tore the front of it but just wrap it around and determine the length of the helix by measuring around here where the helix starts you can line it up with a round number such as 10 centimeters tape it down there and start wrapping around the tape and if you do it carefully in a minute or so you're gonna have your final answer well by this method I approximated that this is by measurement measurement that the length is approximately equal to 400 millimeters 395 405 something like that it's it's nice but it's uh, got a flaw in it ultimately you're measuring around the wire to determine the exact length of the wire that makes up the coil you shouldn't be wrapping it around if you've ever gone up a spiral staircase you know that if you go up on it along the outside you're walking more of a distance of a distance than if you're walking up the stairs closer to the center of rotation on the inside so the inside distance is shorter than the outside distance you can't really wrap a tape on the inside and then average the two of them out so we're gonna have to do some math with this the uh, circle is what's applicable to helix and you can envision this helix as a succession of circles you know you have one there uh, I know I understand there's a little bit of stretch this way but uh, but you can approximate it as a number of circles running in a helix. In a circle, you have here's a bigger one. You have a distance side to side as diameter, and you have another distance going around. So that's circumference. Now, when it comes to this wire coil, we're not looking at the distance uh, on the outside not the one on the inside we're looking at the distance that runs in the middle okay we're gonna need to find a special circumference the mean circumference and for that we're gonna need the mean diameter this is the outside diameter you know from on the outside of the coils this one would be the inside diameter neither of these really accurate we need the mean diameter and it's abbreviated as MD MD mean mean diameter and in this particular case I measured the outside diameter I measured the inside diameter added them divided by two and I've got the mean diameter it happens to be 22 point six seven five I measured it with a caliper the instrument only measures with uh, a, an accuracy of two decimal digits there so why I have three decimal digits is due to the division that I did 
you can envision this mean diameter as the and mean circumference as the circumference of this uh, what is it a quarter some some kind of a d or whatever is on it there to get the mean circumference you need to use the mean diameter and mean circumference is mc just as with any circles the circumference is diameter times pi so mean circumference will be mean diameter times pi and in this case if you do the math it's going to be 71.23 millimeters there's more digits to it I'll show you the uh, full layout at the end that's enough numbers there so once we have the mean circumference of the circle there we can approximate the length of the helix as having a, cer a certain number of these circumferences in the helix and if we start counting here where the coil ends there is circle one there is circle or coil two coil three and turn four and there's a little more to it four full turns and uh, one third two thirds four and two thirds how about that a circle with this mean diameter so about this mean circumference four and two four and two thirds times let's do some math four and two thirds times mean circumference is yeah, four and two thirds times seventy one point twenty three equals three hundred and thirty two millimeters. They're quite different from my initial approximation with the tape measure, which was around four hundred millimeters. Now I only have three hundred and thirty two millimeters for the length of coil because we use the mean diameter not just measured along the outside of it that's a pretty good approximation but there is a more precise one because you know that a circle is not the same as a helix there is a little bit of stretch to it the helix has to be one turn in the helix has to be a little longer than the circumference of a flat circle out of wire I made this one this is also made of wire but this is something I can easily bend because this is made of copper so here is the mean circumference made out of wire and this other piece of wire that I have is one coil there you can see one turn and it fits there there we go from there to there it's exactly one turn and it fits the coil flush so this would be the length this would be the length of one helical turn and this is the length of one flat circle you'll see that this one the helical turn is longer than the flat circle not by much I just calculated the black one to be about 1.2 millimeters longer and I know that the wires are not super flat but if I can make them flush there and straighten them the black one is a smidgen longer than the white one just by a hair see they're flush there and the black one is just a millimeter longer it's not a lot but it's there let's do some math with this and for this I'm gonna need this can again notice that the can is made of paper and that's a good thing if you have ever taken a can like this apart 
you know that it's uh, that the paper that makes up the can is wrapped helically on a diagonal like so. That means that the paper is a triangular paper and the hypotenuse of a triangle can be fitted on it. Here is a big paper that matches the can that I have and if I start wrapping it here like so you can see that the hypotenuse of the triangle will match this line here that is my uh, there is my base for the triangle there is the altitude or height of the triangle and there is the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle see a helix becomes here a triangle that you can calculate with an a square b square c square equation this was the side that was the circumference of the circle and this distance here becomes the distance between two turns in a helix let me just put it back to you in front of you just just one last time see this is a this, the can is about half a turn in height but uh, if it if i make one full turn you can see that my paper triangle makes one full turn because the tip meets the base there and one full turn has a length of this between between coil and coil so on this one all I need to do is measure from the top of the coil to the top of the coil now I can't let me just grab the screwdriver how do I do this say measure from there to there that would be one full turn now I can't measure one full turn I can only measure in between the turns with this caliper so then I would need to add the thickness of the the thickness of the wire to it which I did I determined that that particular turn was where is my pen? That particular turn with the wire added to it was 19.0 millimeters, and that side was side A on a triangle that was going this way. Okay, you can call it side B. It's close. It it doesn't matter on a triangle. Which one is A and which one is A square and which one is B and B square? That doesn't matter as long as this one is the hypotenuse this B side was again the same as the mean the mean circumference of the coil and that number was mm, where is it that one 71.23 71.23 so we can calculate the amount of wire the length of wire that runs along the hypotenuse if we do an A square B square C square on it in other words take the square root of 19.05 squared plus 71.23 squared what you get is the length of wire for one turn and let's second function bracket 19.05 squared plus 71.23 squared bracket equals I have here 73.73 .73 millimeters for one third for one one turn that's one turn now we know that there is four there are four and two thirds of wire turn in this helix so I just have to multiply this number by four and two thirds to arrive to a final number of final length of length of wire is 344.08 millimeters. There. 
344.08. Now, compare it with the previous number that we approximated when we just had four and two thirds flat circles. This one is a little longer, but is more precise and more correct. For the ultimate correctness, mathematical correctness, you gotta notice that this spring here is a progressive rate spring. The distance between the coil turns are nowhere near even. It's different there, it's di then there, then there. It's, it's obviously different distances. So on this last sheet, I calculated everything and I have written everything up. And you can follow this one. There is again my uh, mean diameter, how I arrived to the mean diameter. That's the mean circumference of one third, uh, so of one turn. Those are my uh, distances that I measured between the turns. And that's the length of wire for each turn. When I add it, it's 358. Not a lot longer than the 344, but just a little bit due to the uh, progressive uh, nature of the spring. So, that's how you calculate the length of a helix. Have a happy math time.